Dear colleagues, my name is Alexander Mishirkov and uh, I currently uh, work in uh, Cinemax uh, Data Lab. Data Lab is a company which provides uh, services in uh, uh, machine learning development and uh, integration. And uh, I want to share my knowledge uh, connected with uh, geospatial data. I had a lot of thoughts uh, about how to structure this presentation and I decided uh, maybe not to make it uh, short, but at least simple. I made it as a cookbook. So, if you want to, to uh, choose any sort of your uh, features which are appropriate for your uh, data and uh, for your geospatial data, you can uh, use any part of this presentation in order to uh, add uh, new features into your data set. And today we are going to discuss uh, uh, which uh, ways we can uh, obtain our gear data. Uh, secondly, we will discuss uh, which type of uh, features we can uh, generate based on uh, uh, shapes and geometries. Uh, so, we also discuss uh, how we can aggregate our, aggregate our data. And uh, finally, we will discuss which uh, features we can obtain using uh, knowledge of uh, uh, spatial uh, patterns. So, how to get uh, geodata? There are a lot of different uh, services which provide uh, geodata. For example, Google Maps or Yandex Karte, uh, Yandex Maps uh, uh, can provide uh, different sorts of geodata. But uh, uh, if you want to get open uh, source uh, a solution, OpenStreetMap is the best uh, one. So, uh, you also can find different types of uh, geodata uh, on Kaggle. Uh, uh, if you don't want to uh, set up uh, OpenStreetMap uh, database, uh, but uh, if you want to make a uh, stable and uh, reliable solution, I think that uh, OpenStreetMap uh, is uh, uh, pretty good for such task. Uh, how does this data are collected and uh, kept? We usually use uh, well-known text format. Uh, what does it mean? Well-known text uh, is a type of format uh, which describes uh, polygons, uh, points and lines uh, in uh, the way of uh, strings. So, for example, we can describe uh, points, uh, line strings, uh, polygons, and different uh, type of uh, combined uh, geometries. For example, multi-points, uh, multi-line strings, multi-polygons, and geometry collection. The main rule is to keep uh, 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 such uh, data in a way, uh, when you can uh, collect uh, uh, similar data, data in the same table. For example, points with points and uh, polygons with polygons. In these cases, you can face uh, geocoding uh, tasks. Uh, based on uh, transformation of uh, uh, address tracks into points. There are also different type of services. Uh, for example, Mapbox, uh, Argis, uh, uh, Google Maps, uh, but the uh, free solution and uh, open source solution is nominating, which can be placed on your local machine and uh, uh, use its uh, resources in order to transform addresses into points. In many cases, uh, you can use uh, only coordinates in order to get uh, some features. For example, you can see different uh, regions uh, based on the row density. So you can see pretty obvious uh, geospatial correlation. Regions placed in the northeast usually have less uh, uh, road density than uh, places uh, uh, on the uh, southwest. So, uh, if you use uh, only latitude and longitude, uh, you can uh, uh, describe uh, road density in this way. First of all, you have to know uh, how to transform different geometries uh, into uh, different types of polygons. For example, we can use a buffer. Buffer is a pretty common operation which allows you to expand borders of your polygons or lines or even points. So it usually used, to, for example, in such cases when you want to aggregate data. For example, if you want to make uh, features based on a uh, quantity of points uh, nearby, for example, your current point. You can also transform your polygons into different uh, types of shapes. For example, you can uh, obtain uh, a boundary rectangle or convex hull. What does a convex hull is? It is a, spe a convex hull is a specific shape which uh, uh, slopes uh, to it doesn't inter intersects uh, uh, its sides. 
So if you see different shapes of which uh, slopes uh, intersect uh, its sides, uh, these places are named uh, convexity uh, defects. So based on uh, such uh, areas, uh, areas of polygon, area of convex hull, area of bounding rectangle, you can obtain different types of uh, uh, features. For example, if you use uh, uh, area of uh, your polygon and uh, area of your convex hull and uh, obtain ratio between them, you can get uh, solidity. This feature uh, describes your polygon in terms of uh, uh, convex defects. Uh, if solidity equals 1, so such a form doesn't uh, have uh, solidity def uh, defects and it equals to convex hull. Also, you can get orientation of your polygon and uh, extreme points. But in many, many cases, uh, polygons and shapes doesn't give information by itself. Uh, also, you want to know uh, its relationships be, uh, with each other. Uh, for example, uh, Walter Tobler's first law of uh, uh, geography says that uh, everything is uh, uh, connected with everything, but uh, more close things are uh, connected to more than distant one. In order to make an example of uh, such law, we can uh, take a look at uh, the map at the top. You can see uh, two different hosp uh, hospitals, uh, general one and the infectious one. Uh, and uh, you can see that uh, it also have a different uh, type of building connected uh, with uh, medical uh, work. For example, uh, pharmacies or uh, student or medical student dormitories. At the bottom, you can see an example of uh, a small city, which is there are different uh, type of buildings uh, around uh, one specific area. In this area, you can see all bin, uh, all building which uh, usually people need uh, for normal li life. For example, doctor's office uh, and uh, church or shopping mall. So, uh, this law describes our human behavior when we try to place different uh, objects with the same theme or the same uh, subject in the same place. For example, we uh, like to visit places where a lot of uh, shops, for example. Uh, or we prefer to visit a uh, hospital and see uh, a pharmacy nearby, etc. And also we prefer to communicate with uh, people who are, uh, have a lot of in common with us. For example, uh, poor people prefer to communicate with uh, poor people or rich people prefer to communicate with rich. And uh, developers uh, and uh, data analysts prefer to communicate with the developers and data, uh, data analysts. So, uh, there's why we are here. In different libraries, uh, there are a lot of different uh, ways to make uh, spatial joints. For example, spatial joints based on the intersections or a crossing or uh, a relationship uh, between two objects when one object is uh, within another one. Why else we can use uh, uh, such spatial uh, joints? For example, we can see a real-life problem of uh, tessellation. We faced it uh, on a real project uh, when we had to uh, make uh, tessellation for Russian uh, Federation. So Russian Federation is a big country, uh, but uh, uh, its area uh, not very populated. Only 20% uh, of Russia is populated. So we made uh, our tessellation based on uh, cities and uh, towns, and when we performed uh, uh, exploratory data analysis, uh, we have uh, seen that uh, uh, there are different defects in our tessellation uh, process. For example, you can see intersect intersecting uh, polygons. Uh, such intersections are pretty harmful for our analysis and data. When we want to aggregate uh, our data, we prefer to choose only one uh, polygon but not the both, in order to not to duplicate our data. In many cases, uh, centroids are appropriate for tasks, but sometimes a centroid can give uh, pretty uh, misleading information. For example, uh, points of the centroid can be placed not on the surface of the polygon. And sometimes you have to uh, make points which are placed on the polygon. So you can use uh, specific uh, functions uh, uh, which can describe uh, points on the surface of polygon. 
So we were talking about uh, how to make different spatial uh, spatial joints, how to uh, make uh, points from polygons, but uh, uh, mostly uh, it doesn't uh, describe uh, relationships between uh, points. We also can use uh, different types of distances. There are three types of distance. Uh, the most uh, popular and the most uh, common is uh, planar distances. It is pre uh, pretty simple. It's just a Euclidean distance, for example. And uh, in some cases, when you use uh, such distances, uh, for example, in small towns or uh, on a scale of one street, uh, uh, such distances doesn't give uh, a lot of uh, errors. But uh, when you increase your scale, you can face a problem which connected with uh, the projection of uh, uh, Earth plane uh, of Earth surface on the plane. You have to know every time you use Euclidean distances. Uh, on your ge uh, geodata, that uh, every map is a projection of uh, uh, a sur a surface on a plane, and it gives different type of uh, distortions. For example, you can see uh, Mercator's uh, projections. It gives uh, a pretty serious distortions on the poles. For example, you can see a face of a person which uh, is uh, distorted in the same way as uh, uh, Earth uh, on the Mercator's uh, projection. Uh, so, if you see maps uh, with Mercator projection, you can uh, uh, figure out that uh, uh, Greenland, for example, is, uh, uh, has the same uh, area as uh, Africa, but in reality it, is not, uh, it, it doesn't so. So, there are a lot of different types of projections. For example, uh, stereographic projections have the least uh, uh, distortion at the specific place. For example, if you want to estimate distances in a, city, in a large city or in a small country, uh, it is pretty okay to use uh, stereographic projections. It's also pretty common in use uh, for data uh, placed uh, on the poles. So, also you have to know that uh, every projection and uh, measurement system has its own uh, special reference identifier. Uh, special re reference identifiers are uh, developed by European uh, Petroleum uh, Survey Group, and if you want to analyze different types of geospatial data, you have to uh, find out uh, which uh, SRID is used in order to make uh, specific uh, projection or deprojection operations. And it is important to know that uh, different types of uh, libraries and uh, programs uh, provide you different tools uh, in order to make uh, uh, projection and deprojection operations. For example, you can deproject uh, objects from a specific uh, plane into, for example, uh, 3D uh, data. One more way uh, to measure distances is uh, using uh, geodetic distance. The, most easy, uh, the easiest way to uh, estimate uh, geodetic dis uh, distances is uh, a sign distance. So, it is a distance of arc on the circle. Uh, it usually gives uh, uh, measurement error approximately between 1 or 2 percent, and in many cases it is uh, okay, but uh, sometimes, uh, for example, if we are talking about uh, large distance distances between uh, different uh, countries, uh, it can be uh, pretty deteriorating. If you want to est estimate accurate distances, you can use uh, different types of uh, Earth models. For example, you can use World Geodetic System 84. It describes Earth as geoid, uh, uh, with the center of mass, uh, mass in the center of the coordinates. Uh, that axis uh, connects two poles. Uh, X axis uh, uh, placed on the zero meridian, and uh, Y axis is a uh, orthogonal to this plane. So, geodetic uh, distances are uh, distances as a crown flies. They are the nearest dist uh, distance you can uh, estimate. But, uh, but we are not uh, birds and we cannot uh, avoid different types of uh, objects, uh, uh, buildings, uh, valleys and hills. 
So we usually use uh, different types of routes. So you can also use uh, route distances, a third type of distances. And in order to make uh, route distances, you can use different types of service, for example, uh, services. For example, you can use uh, OpenStreetMap routing machine uh, provides you an opportunity to uh, measure different types of uh, uh, route distances. So you can uh, make uh, route distance for, for example, uh, public transport uh, for car or for bicycles. So now we're going to talk about uh, point aggregations. You can use at least three types of uh, uh, aggregations in order to make your features. For example, you can use uh, administrative divi division, especially when uh, it connects uh, with the uh, business problem. But uh, in many cases it is not uh, very convenient because uh, uh, different types of uh, areas, uh, uh, regions uh, or countries uh, have different uh, area. You also can split your area using, uh, using square tiles. It is pretty convenient because uh, you can uh, provide isolation in a pretty simple way. Ju uh, you just need, to, for example, uh, the set of uh, different longitudes and latitudes and uh, uh, your tiles are ready. But unfortunately, this type of tessellation doesn't provide you a convenient way to find uh, uh, adjacent uh, polygons. You have to use two iterations in order to find all adjacent uh, uh, polygons. In this case, a hexagonal grid is more convenient. You can uh, just uh, uh, get all hexagons uh, on the sides in order to find adjacent uh, hexagons. You can use uh, buffers in order to make uh, features based on uh, nearest uh, points and uh, count of uh, nearest points uh, within uh, radius. But you also can uh, make features based on how much uh, points you can reach, for example, by a car or public transport. Uh, probably you won't use a car if uh, you have a, a shop uh, placed uh, in the front of your home. Uh, so, you can use uh, different, uh, different types of rings in order to aggregate uh, points. But you have to know that uh, uh, you need to normalize uh, uh, such count of uh, points uh, by area. Because uh, if you increase the uh, inner uh, radius, uh, it also increases the uh, uh, area of the ring. If uh, the width of band uh, the same, is the same. Uh, so, it is better to normalize the uh, increasing number of points in order to uh, make uh, appropriate feature. And we are going to talk about uh, pattern evaluation. There are two different uh, algorithms to find uh, hotspots. The first one is uh, Getis uh, uh, or star. It is a pretty simple and convenient algorithm, algorithm which uh, gives you information about hot uh, spots and uh, cold spots and uh, local Morton's eye, which provides you not only information about a uh, hotspot, but also about uh, outliers inside of, the, uh, of such uh, hotspots. In many cases, you would uh, use uh, uh, Getis uh, or Star, you know, uh, just because it is uh, pretty convenient to uh, calculate and uh, uh, it uh, takes less uh, resources in order to make such features. And uh, local Morton's I uh, uh, commonly used uh, for more uh, in-depth analysis. I want to share you a story which inspires me in uh, learning uh, geospatial analysis. And it also shows uh, an importance of uh, um, hotspot analysis and uh, how you can use, for example, local models I in your different tasks. It is a story about Jon Snow. Jon Snow doesn't participate in Game of Thrones, but it participated in Game of Life and Death uh, with Cholera. He was an, uh, British, a British uh, physician uh, we, uh, who uh, have figured out that uh, uh, cholera uh, is a waterborne disease. He, uh, he found out uh, a way of transmission of such disease. Uh, cholera was a pretty uh, common uh, disease in uh, London, and it uh, took a lot of uh, life uh, in uh, 19th century. So, before uh, discovery of Jon Snow, no one knew how uh, d does this uh, disease transmits. So this person visited every building uh, which uh, 
uh, had uh, patients with uh, cholera and uh, counted uh, how much uh, patients uh, were in uh, different buildings. So he figured out that uh, uh, there is a hotspot. This hotspot was placed uh, nearby the pump. Uh, this pump was infected by cholera. But more interesting that uh, also on this map you can see an outlier, low high area, uh, which is a brewery. So I hope you uh, give us an answer why does people didn't use uh, uh, pump uh, in the comment sections. So he also can use uh, clustering in order to uh, find uh, different type of pat uh, patterns. You can use Cummins uh, or you can use DBSCAN. I think that uh, DBSCAN is more appropriate for geospatial uh, tests. First of all, DBSCAN logic is more close to uh, geospatial data. And, uh, secondly, and secondly, you don't need to choose how much clusters uh, you need to, to provide DBSCAN analysis. Also, kernel density estimator is not only the way to visual visualize uh, your data. It also a pretty good uh, feature which describes how many points are placed nearby a uh, specific point. You can use uh, Escalern in order to define uh, the density score uh, of your data and to make a good feature for your analysis. Dear viewers, my presentation is over and you can uh, leave your comments and uh, questions in the comment section. I'm pretty pleased to, to know that a lot of different uh, and interesting people are communicating and uh, uh, sharing opinions uh, in the comments. And it is pretty important for me uh, because uh, every time I see a new uh, question or comment, it makes my presentation, my knowledge of geospatial analysis better. And I want you to give us uh, likes and subscribe to our channel. Thanks a lot for your attention.